Hello again, this is Gordon Van Fleet from Kitchens by Savina. We're doing another video set today. Today we're moving into repairs and maintenance on cabinets. Today I'm gonna to show you how to adjust hinges on kitchen cabinets. In a modern kitchen, uh, there's several different types of hinges that are used. You might have a traditional American style kitchen with a face frame. Uh, face frame is typically what we're showing right here on the cabinet. This is a face frame. Uh, some of the imported cabinets or modern contemporary cabinets are what's called frameless design. Basically a thicker cabinet side and it doesn't have the frame. Here we have the two types of hinges. So this type is used in a frameless cabinet. Uh, typically be your contemporary style cabinet coming out of Europe. Uh, flush doors uh, often are used like a high gloss flush door, but it could be any type of door. Um, I'm gonna unclip this base plate just so you can see. Here's a clip type and that just releases the base plate. Now you'll see that this base plate wraps around a frame and sometimes there are base plates made for this hinge that also wrap around a frame. So this part would screw to the side of the cabinet and then you can see the back of the hinge. This part clips into the back of the hinge, moves forward, and then presses and clips together. So that's what holds the hinge to the frame. Then this part would go in the door. We'll show all of this to you on our cabinet. Now, before I go further, there are two types of drivers for these hinges. Most people think they're all Phillips tip drivers. Uh, which is typically this X uh, on, a, on a screw, people think of it as a Phillips. Well, this one is a true Phillips, and you know, you'll get a good bite with a, a regular Phillips driver. But this type coming out of Europe is what's called a posi drive bit. And if you try to use a Phillips bit in this, you're very likely to strip out the screw. You don't get that tight feeling here that you would with a posi drive bit, which really locks in tight. And you can tell the difference. This one has a, an indication marking on it called PZ2, where this is simply a P2 driver bit. And if you go to the hardware store or a Home Depot, something like that, they offer both types of bits and you wanna make sure you have the right one for your hinge uh, and the hinge screw. And again, if you look at this, you'll see a little mark there's an X and then there's like another X. So it's almost like uh, eight marks there. And the Phillips tip, the Phillips screw does not have that. So the, before you get started adjusting your hinges, you wanna make sure you have the right driver to be successful. Okay, so this is the posi drive type screw. And on, on the hinge, there's three screws. This one has an oblong, uh, opening which allows the hinge to move back and forth in this direction. The center one has an up and down elongated hole which allows the hinge to move up and down. And this one here uh, actually is on a cam that makes the hinge move in and out. So here I want you to pay attention to this space in the hinge while I turn this screw. I'm turning it clockwise and that space is getting smaller. That's moving the door side to side. When I turn it out it's moving it in the other direction side to side and you can see the space getting larger. All of these adjustments allow approximately an eighth of an inch of movement in the door hinge. Now, this one here moving in and out, again, if I loosen that up, you can see that the hinge can move in and out this way. And so when you get it where you want it, then you tighten that hinge up and that will lock the door in place. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the operation of this hinge. Uh, one of the features of this face frame hinge is its soft close, and that is this plunger right here, which when it closes to a certain point, it hits that plunger, which will, right at this point, give it a very soft close as it's uh, a dampened motion. And this little switch here has three positions it speeds or slows how fast the door will close. There's normally three positions on, on each hinge, and then if you have two hinges, it's really six levels of dampening on the door. And the reason is a small door 
weighs uh, a certain amount, say it weighs one pound for a 12 inch high door, and a 24 inch door would be two pounds, and a three foot high door would be perhaps three pounds. And so based on the weight of the door, it's gonna close faster or slower, and this allows you to adjust it so that the doors in your kitchen can all close at a similar speed. Okay, then I'm gonna use the Phillips tip for this hinge. And uh, in this hinge, in this elongated slot, this is what would attach the hinge to the face frame. And before it's totally tightened down, allow this hinge to move up and down on the face frame to move your door up or down. This hinge here on the face allows the door to move side to side. Again, we loosen this and this is on a cam but this is sliding the door hinge side to side. I don't know if you can see that, but it relative to this uh, holder here, uh, when I turn it counterclockwise, it's pulling the door in. And when I turn it clockwise, it's pushing the door out. So that's what this adjustment does. Uh, here is an adjustment that, uh, again, if this is the frame of the cabinet where my finger is, and this is where the door goes. This will move the door in and out, front to back. And so, uh, you know, showing that is a little bit difficult. Um, probably easier to show that when it's on the cabinet. So we'll take a look at that on the cabinet next. Here's a cabinet that is out of adjustment. The bottom is tight to the cabinet and the top of the door is away from the cabinet and you can see how it pushes back and forth. The adjustment for this, when we open the door, the hinge at the bottom is tight to the cabinet, the hinge at the top is away from the cabinet. So we'll pull this hinge into the cabinet with the cam screw at the back. And again, all of these adjustment screws, you might not be sure what they're for, just turn the screw slightly back or forth and take a note of the action it has on the hinge. And then you'll understand how to adjust them. And now the bottom hinge, I'm gonna pull out a little bit and now the door should close properly. And there you can see there's no more bounce and the door closes properly. Um, some of the other adjustments on this hinge are, is the door parallel to the edge of the cabinet? Right now, we have a little less than a quarter inch spacing from the edge of the cabinet. I'm gonna throw this out of adjustment so you can see. I'm gonna make this a smaller gap, maybe an eighth of an inch, this a larger gap. This cam moves the door. Right now, I've moved it to the extreme setting to move the door in this direction. And now I'm gonna do this to move the door in the opposite direction. And now it's the maximum in the opposite direction. And so this does two things. At this juncture, it's no longer parallel with the side of the cabinet. It's about an eighth inch here, about five sixteenths at the bottom. But also from the face of the cabinet, the door's hanging crooked. This side of the door is down farther than the other side. And you can see that it's a smaller spacing here than there. So this can happen for a lot of reasons in your kitchen. Maybe it wasn't installed and adjusted correctly in the beginning, or maybe somebody, a child or a dog, put some force on the door out of adjustment, or maybe with the seasons, the screws came loose and need to be adjusted and tightened up. So again, to correct this now, let's look at the face of the door. I'm gonna move the door in this direction at the top, in this direction at the bottom, and that's gonna lift this corner up and relative to this. This side won't change, but it will lift the door up this way. So again, I'm moving this hinge in this direction. And the other one in the opposite direction. And now the door is parallel on the side and parallel on the top and is adjusted properly to the cabinet. Okay, here we're gonna illustrate um, if your doors were adjusted relatively tight with the gap in the center and you came into the middle of a humid summer or a lot of rain, maybe your doors are gonna grow in size and they're gonna hit. Or maybe your house settled and your doors are hitting. So here's what we're gonna do to change that. We're gonna move both doors side to side until they have the proper gap in the middle. 
So I'm gonna start with the hinge here and here, and I'm gonna move the door out to the side. To do that, we're gonna adjust the cam on the face of the hinge. And as we turn it, we take note and we turn this counterclockwise, it moves the hinge to the outside. We're doing the same with the upper hinge, moving it to the outside. Now we're gonna check to see the effect that had on the center of the door. Now they close, but I'm noting that the height is not correct. This door is higher than that one here. And also the gap is not correct. It's a little wider at the bottom than the top. So now we're gonna to move to the right-hand door. Uh, I note that the gap is about what I want at the bottom between the two doors, and it's quite tight at the top. That tells me that this hinge is about in the correct position left to right, but the top hinge needs to move out in this direction, which will increase this gap, and it will also lift this door to be more in line with the one next to it. Once I make that adjustment, we'll check out a few of the other features. So I'm gonna open the door and I'm gonna work on this top hinge here. And we're gonna take the screwdriver and move that slightly out in that direction. Now we'll check the door to see how it aligns. So I note that the gap is pretty good here, but the next change I wanna make is I'm noticing these doors aren't flush right here. This door sticks out a little bit and you can see it bounces. This door's tighter. So on this door, I'm gonna push this hinge in towards the back of the cabinet. We're gonna do that next. The adjustment for this hinge is the back one. And we're going to pull that in slightly to the cabinet. Let me see if, if that corrected it. We may have to pull the top one out a little bit. And I am gonna do that. I'm gonna pull the top one out a little bit, which also will pull this corner in. And so we see that here. Okay. Yes, that's much better there. Now, I'm gonna make some final adjustments, uh, which are gonna amount to, we still have this door taller than this one, higher than this one here. So I'm gonna move the bottom of the door in this direction out and this top hinge in that direction to correct that. Again, moving to the face cam, we move that door slightly out. This one's gonna come slightly in. Close this door. That took care of half the problem. Now on this door, I'm gonna move it slightly in that direction. Again, the face cam. And now I'm pretty happy with the door. The gap in the middle is pretty uniform and the doors are at the same height that they should be. And I'd say that this cabinet is adjusted well now. Okay, so finally I'm gonna show you an economy cabinet. This has a less expensive hinge, and the whole cabinet, of course, is less expensive, so it does not offer all the features. Uh, where this hinge attaches to the cabinet, it has quite a large hole, and it has a bigger screw with a broader head. So you can see that because of the size of the hole, I can move the door up and down. That's one adjustment. And then I can move it in and out this way. That's another adjustment. And a final adjustment is if I loosen the screw enough, and I'm gonna show that here. Um, let's say I loosen the screw an eighth of an inch. Well, now I could put a piece of wood or a piece of cardboard, some kind of a shim, and then tighten the screw back up and that'll move the door back and forth. So again, this is a way for this hinge to be adjustable in the three directions. It's a little bit more old school, and of course it's a lot less expensive hinge, um, and allows for the economy and the price of the cabinet. And this just simply has a spring, which allows the door to pull shut tightly, as we can see there. And you can hear that little bang, and of course with the soft close hinge, you don't get the bang. It closes like to this position, and then slowly closes for a more cushioned, uh, softer approach to the closing. Okay, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, today we talked about hinges and hinge adjustment. In upcoming videos, 
We hope to talk about other aspects of kitchen repair and maintenance. Next week, uh, we anticipate bringing you a video about drawer adjustments and drawer track, the types of systems that are used in a kitchen. Uh, we'll show you what's used in a modern kitchen and talk about a few other things too. Um, my name is Gordon Van Fleet. I work here in upstate New York in Rochester. Uh, operate Kitchens by Savina. We've been doing this for 40 years. We'd be happy to help you with any trouble that you have in your kitchen. Uh, give us a ring, give us a comment, send me a message. If you have a different type of hinge, different type of problem in your kitchen, uh, let me know. I'll try to help you out, give you all the advice I can to help walk you through uh, your difficulty and get your kitchen back on track again. Remember, if you like this video, to hit subscribe. Uh, maybe hit the notification bell so you don't miss our upcoming videos. And we'll be looking to speak with you again next time. Bye.